practice of hopology utilizes both sides of the brain, as we stated earlier in the introduction or the overview of the practice of hopology, how we actually employ both sides of the brain, the left side, which is the more analytical place where we're learning and, and, and we're teaching from that particular rational type of mindset. And then the right side, which is more of your creative side where we are creating things and we're tapping in just to another flow. Uh, and it's so awesome that God has made us that way that we are balanced. <laughs> but some people have more of the creative from the right side and some people have more of the left side analytical. So whether you're more right-brained or left-brained, the practice of hopology is for you because it fires up both sides of the brain and that way it helps it to become more real or more a part of your everyday life. And that's what this is all about as a self-help empowerment too. So now as we're looking at imagine hope and ways to imagine hope, we're tapping back into that right side, that creative side. And as I always say, if you don't like the world that you're living in, create a better world. And how can you create it? Right here. You can create it right between your ears when you begin to what we call imagine hope. And it's so amazing how the things that we create and we imagine can actually come to pass and come into this natural realm where we can see it and touch it and, and it's, it's real. Because really, it is real. When it's here, it's still real. It's real to us, right? And, and, and we're looking at ways, though, that we can bring it forth from the creative place, that imagination, into reality. And it happens every day. And hope is a powerful force to help it happen, to help it uh, come to pass and to be that place of waiting. So while you're waiting, you are hoping. And not only are you hoping, but you're imagining hope. So let's talk about what it means to imagine hope. Imagining hope requires creating an image of hope while remembering God's goodness. When you imagine hope, it helps you to press on towards the dreams and goals that you have for your life. Ways you can imagine hope. Anchor your hopeful thoughts and language with imagery based upon the things that you are hoping for. Here's that word again, and we talked about anchor, and anchor means to keep in place, to be able to help it to remain, even though life and circumstances <laughs> may be blowing, uh, that we can remain in this place of hope. And so that's how we anchor our hope. Imagining hope is a little different than the hope symbolism, because now we're talking about imagining uh, those things that you are hoping for. So for instance, if you're hoping to see a, uh, a better day, a better day, a better way that you're, that you're believing and you're hoping that things are going to get better, whatever those things may be. So to imagine hope is to imagine using your mind's eye and your imagination and actually seeing the things the way you desire them to be. So you're not just looking at things as they are, just like we talked about speaking, but now you're imagining. So you're taking it to another, uh, another level and you're engaging your brain and you're actually creating the vision. For instance, I, I use the, uh, the example of my hypertension and, and how I'm in the process of dealing with that right now. Well, one of the things that I see in my imagination is stable blood pressure. I'm seeing that little machine that I use and I, that digital that takes your blood pressure is a digital uh, reading. And I'm seeing those numbers because my blood pressure has gone down. 
and in so many ways that we can imagine. Say, if you are believing for a certain uh, amount of money, uh, I know it's a lot of talk about millionaires and billionaires and this and that. So, so say you 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 have your career, your entrepreneur, or your business, and you really really want increase. Well, see that increase, see it happening, see it in your mind's eye. Make it so real until you can actually taste it and touch it and feel it. Feel the emotions, even if 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 it's in your brain, because your brain cannot really distinguish. So for your brain, it, it is real. So you place those images there of you succeeding in whichever direction you desire to succeed in. Say you're, you're wanting to be a big speaker. You want to speak for large platforms. Well, for years, uh, that was one of the things that I desired, that, that I wanted to be able to share on major platforms, big platforms, where thousands of people were in the room. <laughs> and quite frankly, that was not necessarily happening, but I always had that picture. I saw myself up there. I saw myself speaking to those crowds. Well, it actually happened this past year. Last year it happened when I went on my South African Hope Tour and I went from one you know, venue to the other, one church to the other, all doing their, their Women's Month. And I was able to speak on platforms that were major, that, that were so many people, and it was so much fun, and I did it. And, and I remember it was, to me, it was like a deja vu because I'd already imagined it. Now, it took a while. See, that's the thing about hope. Hope is future-oriented. So you don't imagine today, and then tomorrow, there it is. Well, it is tomorrow. It's somewhere in the future. <laughs> Maybe not the next day. So that is the first way that we can imagine hope. Anchor your hopeful thoughts and language with imagery based upon the things that you're hoping for. The next one, take time to envision the future you would like to see. Now, this is a little different. The first point was talking about the actual things that you would like to see. So you're, you're bringing them into your view, whether it's that particular car, your dream car. And that's another, I could give testimony after testimony of, of how those things really, really happen. And it really works because eventually I ended up driving the car that was always in my heart as my dream car. I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about how I was going to purchase it or trying to purchase it or, or anything like that. But it was inside of me as something that I wanted and eventually it happened. So that's what the first thing is all about. But now this second point is about envisioning as a whole. So you're taking it, you're taking the lens and you're widening it out and you're looking from a panoramic view and you're actually seeing where you would like to be maybe in five years okay i'll use that as an example because i remember during a time as 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 many of you know uh i'm in recovery from drugs and alcohol addiction over three decades now but i still share my testimony because it's a it's a testimony of hope and there are people who are bound and they need to know you can be free and um but I, i'll never forget that there was a season where I was going through a particularly dark period and I could not see. I, I remember trying to see, let me look five years ahead. Where would I be? And it was nothing. It was darkness. In that particular example, what I did is I pulled it back to five months. Okay. I can't see five years out, but let me say five months from now. And I saw myself going back to Florida State University, re-enrolling in school and finishing my degree. So sometimes you can't go so far in the future, but listen, tomorrow is the future. <laughs> so, so envision that future. Envision yourself completing a task, a major goal. See yourself doing it. That's very important when we say envision now. So now you're, 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 you're seeing what you would like to see happen in your life, not just what is happening. Maybe that 
that includes a relationship. Maybe that includes, uh, you know, like I said before, uh, amount of money that you'd like to see. Uh, maybe that includes a, a health, a healthier lifestyle, weight loss, you know, what have you. But just envision it and keep that vision before you. Because the opposite is where you just can't see it. And you have to see it in order to achieve it. So we have to see it, we have to believe it, and then we can achieve it. Let's look at the third point here. See them in your mind's eye and don't let go of the image even in the midst of stark reality in your life. So as you're seeing the things that you're, you know, the imagery that you are allowing yourself, you are imagining and you're seeing these things, don't lose them. I don't care how many days or weeks or months or even years may pass. Always have that picture somewhere inside of you where you see it because you know that you can achieve it. And no matter what's going on around you, no matter the stark reality, because that's what's happening now, but that's not necessarily what's going to happen in the future. Now, let's look at the next point, and it helps us to see how we can actually move forward and get there. Create a vision board and allow your imagination to take you to places you desire to go. Allow your imagination, not someone else's, but your own. And the reason why I say that is because when we really are honest with ourselves, we have to look at what we actually desire, what we want, and not what necessarily someone else or, you know, our loved one, our family, our friends, or, or, or the what we should want <laughs> or should desire, but what we actually would like to see. And then do the vision board and, and be honest. Let there be a true connection between you and what you're putting up there. Not just, oh, this house, oh, this house looks good. Let me put it here. Oh, this car. Oh, yeah, let me, you know. And so many times when we do these vision boards, it's all about things. And it has to be a little deeper than, than, than just the things. But when you start putting it up on the board, then you have something that you can look at now on the outside as well as on the inside, but always keep it here in your imagination. The next way that we can imagine hope is develop a vision and plan for your future by tapping into God's plans for you. The Bible states in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future hope and a future. So now we're talking about this whole plan of action because we're going to put some feet to our vision in terms of, okay, how am I going to get there? And the best way, and that is to tap in to what God's plans are for your life. Tap into what you believe that the Lord has blessed you to do your purpose, what, where, where does your anointing lie? And then beginning to plan out your future based upon that. Uh, we know God has plans, but we have to now put those plans together. And then the next part of that would be to write the vision and make it plain. So write down what you're seeing and what you're doing. That's through the vision board, the envisioning and also through the plan as we are as we develop a plan and then we actually write it out as we're talking about imagining hope and we mentioned the hope vision board and then the envisioning process i want to now show you an example of our hope vision board and our hope vision board is used for envisioning it's not just the vision board of the things that we desire to see in the future, but it's about putting those things that will inspire and bring hope. So that includes words, that includes photos of people, that includes phrases, and, and those things that will help you to keep moving forward in your hope and becoming more hopeful and staying hopeful. So this is how we utilize our vision board. 
during our Christ Vision Tribe meetings, we have the vision board that is up and we add to it. We've had it for years and we add different things from time to time. And we each go by the vision board and we look at it and see what speaks to us at that particular time. And then as a part of our meeting, we each share what spoke to us and then we share why. And then we will share the top three because there's so many you can just go on for days. And then we come up with the one that really, really is speaking to us now. So your vision board should speak to you. And that's why we have a lot of, of words and phrases on there as well as photos. Let's look at the envisioning board that I've, I've shared the example. And there's so much on there. So today, I'll just say today I'm looking at the envisioning board. And what really speaks to me today is... Connect with the heart, make the connection, and the word now. And the reason why these three speak to me now is because of now. Now I'm in the midst of training with the practice of Hopeology and the connection that I'm believing that we're making so that we can become more hopeful and making that connection now. So that speaks to me today, now. Your exercise is this. Look at this particular vision board and write down the three things that speak to you, whether it's a photo, whether it's words or what have you, or, or a photo of a person or people, and then talk about why that particular thing spoke to you right now. That's your exercise because we can all create a better world when we tap into that creative side of our brains and that's that right side and that we can begin to create a better world and we can imagine hope and that's one way that can help us to stay hopeful.